Las Vegas, it's The Q. Covering EMC World 2016. Brought to you by EMC. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program, where we extract the signal from noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is David Goulden, CEO of EMC's Information Infrastructure, EMC2. And now, as announced today, EMC, Dell EMC, which is the Enterprise Division, congratulations. Um, you run the show, congratulations as always, we predicted that on theCUBE, congratulations. <laughs> well, thank, thanks John, I mean, you know, it's, it's actually nice to have a name for the new <laughs> business, right? We've all been speculating, so I think, uh, um, obviously Dell Technologies got a nice ring for the overall business, but we're all excited about Dell EMC for the enterprise business. That's going to give us a strong identity. You know, it shows the commitment to, to EMC, to the technology, the services. Yeah. Um, so it's a nice combination. You start to see essentially a federation-like model, but under one company, Dell Technologies, where there's a lot of components on the umbrella, where you're now Dell EMC, I see focus, which is kind of basically validates that EMC's not going away, it's only being expanded. What are some of the synergy points that customers should know about? Because that's going to be the key, right? The key is continuing the mission of the present, that you pointed out in your presentation, but then being positioned to invest in the future. There got to be some synergy, one, cost reductions, you pointed that out, but where's the synergies? Oh, John, it's, it's actually not, it's not really, really cost. That's not where, where we're focused. We're focused upon the innovation and bringing together the technology families that are completely, almost completely complementary. There's so little overlap. So if you think of kind of what EMC brings, brings to the party, uh, number one player in storage across the whole board, um, um, except for the super very, very low end of mid-tier storage, um, we're obviously number one in a CI. Uh, you bring together from the Dell Enterprise business, uh, you know, the number one server technology platform, and actually where Dell does have strength, it's more in the super low end of the storage marketplace where we're not quite as strong. So combined, we'll actually be the market share leader in every single one of the IDC price bands uh, for, for, for storage. And then if you think of where the industry's going, um, towards uh, convergence and software, uh, software-defined technologies, uh, hyper-converged. Basically, this whole server and storage industry is recombining over time. And the ability to bring you know, these number one technology positions to, together to really offer our customers the broadest and best range of infrastructure and CI, uh, as well as the overall family message around you know, VMware and Virtustream and Pivotal and all the rest of it is really very well, exciting. Well, the first so thing that gets commoditized the is the hardware, right? So hardware gets commoditized first, and now with the global scale of the supply chain, the software takes the focus. Well, you, software you, I think you had pointed out, what was the box you pointed out that's now to you? Was that the? That's the unity. unity. Right, so software's taken over the world, but let's not, let's not discount innovation in systems, right? Yeah. And by systems, I mean the combination of hardware and software and something that's very smart. So you can look at something like Unity, which is clearly a, a very powerful hardware-software combo uh, for traditional applications, but also look at something like DSSD, which is a complete game changer that leverages combination of hardware and software for super high performance in these new um, you know, data intensive apps. So the world is combining, but I wouldn't discount it all as commoditizing because obviously the basic building blocks themselves are becoming more standardized, but then there's always room for innovation around them. I knew that the C word would kick off an interesting conversation because since Michael Dell's been building PCs in his dorm, observers have said hardware is going to be commoditized. Yet, the business has been able to throw off, for the leaders, the Cisco's, the, the EMC's for example, even now a small upstart like Pure Storage, a 60% gross margin model. So it's actually been quite a profitable business that's, that's sustainable. It's interesting what you're saying about, it's really not about the cost. Because a lot of people think that the merger has been about you being able to compete in this new era of lower cost and commoditization. You're saying something different. I'm saying that we can leverage some of the things that Dell does great from a supply chain point of view, from a volume manufacturing point of view, um, but ultimately there's still a value play on top of that. Um, if you look at EMC, for example, you know, we have a, a storage business that's very, uh, you know, 50 points plus gross margin, close to 60 point gross margin right. storage business. Everything that we build in those systems, you could buy off the street as a commodity. Um, you know, the, the drives, the memories, the, the, the sheet metal, et cetera, but we put it together in 
in an appliance type package that includes hardware engineering based on these standard componentry and a lot of software and a complete enterprise um, services and support model that creates something of great value to our customers. So we shouldn't confuse commoditization with the ability to innovate around commodity components. And bear in mind, neither EMC or Dell builds the components. We're taking advantage of the innovation and the cost reduction of the supply chain, we're actually adding value on top of that. And that off-the-shelf dynamic has been around for decades. It's and been, been around to, for decades. And, and you implied on the last call, uh, but maybe I inferred, that <laughs> you know, the margin model is cyclical, right? It ebbs, it flows, but, but you're still in the business of making good money. That, that doesn't change, right? <laughs> the business that we're in is one where we provide a lot of value to our customers, and my view is very simple. The gross margins you get on anything is directly proportional to the value you create for the customer. So the more value the customer perceives compared to your raw componentry, the higher your gross so margin. you're not you're micromanaging be. gross margins, you're micromanaging value creation We are of anything, building right? value <laughs> in a gross margin is simply a byproduct, right? People can get, get focused on, it's yeah. now almost looking through the wrong end of, of, of right. the telescope. The, the value is what's created, and the value results in gross margins which are higher or lower based upon the value it's a calculation. you <laughs> it's, a, it's a It's a derived number, not a, a plan number. It's derived yeah. based upon the value that you create. David, we love having you in theCUBE because you're the triple classic tech athlete, triple threat. You know your finance corp dev, great operator, also strategy in the chessboard. And you made a comment on stage, this is more about strategy piece, that you made, you saw this coming a while ago, the two divisions. Um, you know, core, tech, traditional, and then emerging. And I want to get your thoughts on this because a lot's changed since those couple of years, three years ago. We were talking this on theCUBE. So, so what has changed in that area? Because you were operating on the premise a few years ago, okay, we saw a flash coming, you saw the margins, you still have to have a strategy change, and you saw it coming, you made a good call. So that's good for you, but now what's changed between core tech and, emer um, and emerging? What'd you get right? What'd you have to sharpen the saw on? What'd you have to do differently? Yeah, bear in mind, uh, people often confuse these things. So uh, core technology and emerging technology about the applications, right? In the case of uh, traditional applications, their client server, their scalar applications, the applications expect a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot of services and resiliency from the infrastructure. In the case of cloud native, the apps themselves are different. They're based upon microservices, they're sitting in containers, they're scale out apps. They've got built in resiliency. So, what they want from the infrastructure is much more basic. They want performance and they want some basic uh, persistent capacity. So, that's the shift which we saw. And here's where I say people get mixed up sometimes. People say, hey, Flash is to do with the new world of the scale out apps. Well, actually, it's as much to do with accelerating the performance of the core apps. You look at yeah. the most successful Flash. A product in the marketplace today is Extreme IO. It talks about the commanding market share, three times the share of a nearest competitor. What do people do with Extreme IO? They run their traditional applications better. They're running yeah, yeah. databases and exchange Efficiency. and VDI. So it's, it's, it's slotting new technology into existing applications. In the case of emerging technologies, the applications are new. In fact, in many cases, they're still, they're still forming. Most enterprises probably don't have a lot of cloud-native apps in production yet, but they're, but they're all starting to build them, which is why Cloud Foundry becomes so successful. And, and the under, under and, and the, and before I know Jay's got a question, but I want to get to the underpinnings. You mentioned the underpinnings of traditional, obviously, data domain, backup, and other things, and on the cloud-native, it's capacity uh, planning it's and the capacity. It's performance optimized. So cloud-native applications are basically going to be two-tier applications. They're going to have a very hot performance tier. And that's where something like DSSD can play at the super high end, where scale I.O. sitting on hyperconverge can play for things that don't need some, such uh, quite, quite fast blazing performance. And then they have a massive capacity tier, because these uh, cloud native apps are, have 100 times or 1,000 times more data per user than your traditional apps. So that's why you have to have massive scale out capacity underneath that performance tier. So think of it as a uh, very hot core. Capacity optimized. Capacity optimized, so performance op optimized for the transaction piece, and then capacity optimized these massive data sets. So think of things like data lakes, where you're storing uh, petabytes and petabytes of data, um, and you're analyzing it using things like HDFS, massive amounts of data. Go back to your traditional apps, think of ERP, a 20 terabyte database for an ERP customer is a big is is a big uh, database. Now, what do you do with that? You create backups, you create replicas, you have free site uh, recovery. That's what you do with the traditional app. But a 20 terabyte app is tiny in the new world. So that's why we talk about the fact the infrastructure is going to have to be different. I could, I know you're tight on time. I got a zillion. I could go an hour with you. Um, I'm going to ask the Virtue Stream question. So we were talking about value creation before. Your strategy with Virtue Stream, it appears, is not to just 
try to take Amazon head on. It's to try no, to create a value play and some kind of solution and integration with your core portfolio. Can you confirm that and talk about that a little Completely. bit? Completely. I think it's really important to understand where EMC is strong and therefore where Virtustream plays. So historically, look at our market sharing stories. It's about 30 points of market share. But Take that now and apply it to mission critical data center applications. That market share goes up closer to 50%, half. That's where, where we live. Mission critical data lives generally on EMC, at least half it around the entire world. So think of what we've done with Virtustream. That cloud is designed for exactly those applications. It's not a general purpose um, platform free cloud. It's designed initially for those mission critical workloads that live on EMC environments today. So it's the natural parties, the natural counterpart to live hand in hand with EMC because we're going after the same apps. And today, those applications are not going anywhere. You can't run those mission critical apps in a general third party public cloud because you can't guarantee IOPS at the virtual machine level in those, in, in those environments. But what we've done with Virtual Dream, you can. So you can take things like SAP and move it into a very cost competitive but performance guaranteed public cloud. And that's where Virtual Dream plays. So have you seen any evidence that Amazon can play there as an example or some of these public cloud guys? I use um, Amazon as an example, but. I mean, obviously Amazon has a very broad range of services, but you uh, double click upon what you need to try and create out of an Amazon environment with multiple availability zones, and even then, you couldn't guarantee the managed services levels that we can produce out of, of a virtual stream cloud, because they're building it on a fundamentally different architecture. Bear in mind that Amazon's building up from a software-defined, uh, hyper-converged architecture, and try and move that back into the traditional enterprise. And this comes back to my fundamental point. These traditional apps and cloud-native apps are going to live on different infrastructures. You want to try and obviously cross-pollinate the data between them and have some common management schemas, but the apps are so different that if you are born in cloud native from an infrastructure point of view, which is kind of more where Amazon came from, you're going to really struggle to retrofit that yes. into the traditional app world. And you believe that can be a growth business for you guys? Well, we believe that will be a huge growth business for us because again, um, it's helping our customers do what they do with EMC today on-prem, of course, which will help them to modernize that into a private cloud, but if they really want to take those mission critical apps, we've got really one of probably only two in the world, what I call enterprise optimized public clouds, mm -hmm. for that type of application, which plays to our strength. So we're not chasing Amazon at Amazon's game. Uh, we can either use, we, we can even use the Amazon cloud for some commodity level, uh, you know, compute or storage capability to augment what we're doing with Virtustream. We don't basically exclude it, but our core is aimed at a different place. David, I want you to use the next couple of minutes we have left to talk about the culture of EMC, obviously. A Dell and culture match came up, as Michael pointed out on stage, I saw some of the results. But there's a lot of people always like to speculate with mergers and stuff, what's going on? Their job, who's going to get fired, which product groups will win, lose, all that good stuff always goes on. And you've got a real boost of confidence with EMC, with the Dell EMC name. Okay, Michael was just talking about that. You're right. the president, uh, CEO of that company, or president, or they get you, whatever they call you. But that's EMC, nothing's really changed. But yet, this, will Hopkinton evolve? I mean, will it be downsized? What's the, what's the future going to look like? Certain things come and go. Share your thoughts on that, and, and obviously customers too want to know, you know the future of the innovation. Sure, so the core of, of Dell EMC is both Dell and EMC, I don't think, so it's both parts. So obviously, the, basically all of what you know from EMC information infrastructure goes into our business, our storage, our CI, virtual stream, ECD, RSA. But understand that from Dell, we're bringing their entire server business in, their entire storage business in, their solutions business, their converged infrastructure business. So it's going to become the biggest infrastructure business on the planet. But it's really a combination of both. And you look at the revenues and how much comes from Dell and how much comes from EMC, they're roughly similar. So essentially, we so double. You're going to gas it. You're not going to slow size. down. We double the size of this business, and the innovation agenda is huge. I mean, I think anybody who listen to my uh, keynote today would have to believe that the that yeah. our foot is on the accelerator in terms of innovation. The number of announcements yeah. and innovations and the speed at which we're, we're moving. It's a growth strategy, and that's only going to accelerate when we get the Dell technologies in. And then 
you know, from a customer point of view, from a culture point of view, it's been great. It's obviously we've now had a, a number of months to start working together as teams. I've started to spend much more time with the uh, with the Dell teams. And by the way, the Dell businesses aren't all based in Round Rock either. They're kind of around the world. So I know you talk about maybe having a Austin, an Austin headquarters and Hopkins headquarters, but the truth of the matter is that not many of the EMC businesses are based in Hopkins these days, right? They're based on the West Coast, they're based yes. in India, they're based in uh, Israel, uh, and the same thing you can say for the Dell businesses. So it's just a hub where, if you like, the, the, the headquarters of the new uh, you know, Dell EMC infrastructure business is gonna come together, and as such, that's gonna be a growth business. Uh, we've made a big uh, commitment to the Boston community that that okay. is going to be based there. You know, we now show how prevalent the EMC name is going to be. So it's a good news story. Thanks for clarifying that. Really appreciate that. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule. Guys, Great to see you. Thank you, you. And the pedals to the metal here at EMC. Dell EMC, the new business unit. The CEO is here, David Goulden of Dell EMC, newly announced business unit. Thanks for spending some time on theCUBE. Dave, thank I'm you I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante, extracting the signal from the noise. You're watching theCUBE. It's always fun to come back to theCUBE because, you know, the, 